Welcome everyone. This is Michael from the Marx Group Live. Happy to be working with you today on the contacts module. After this video is over, please, there we go. After this video is over, please feel free to email us at support at marxgrouplive.com for any questions on this topic or on anything else Zoho. Also, be sure to rate this class as well, helping out our fellow Zoho users and helping us to improve our video library. In this lesson, we're going to take our first dive into the contacts module. We'll start by putting the contacts module into the larger perspective of the Zoho CRM environment. Then we'll look into how to find the contacts module. We'll create a new contact in two different ways, first by converting a lead and then by using one of the add new methods. We'll take a quick look at some of the most important fields in a contact and finally, we'll look into some of the things that we're likely to do with the contact. Before, however, we get into our Zoho screens, one word of advice. If your screen doesn't look exactly like mine, don't panic. Your Zoho instance might be set up to a little bit differently from mine, and there may be a few situations or differences in some of the screens. Most of what I demonstrate today should work across all versions of Zoho with minimal differences. If you try to replicate what I'm doing and you get stuck, drop us an email again at support at marksgrouplive.com and we'll see about helping you out. Let's get started with a review of the context for contacts in Zoho. In most business situations, we have a CRM that has a bunch of leads in it. These are people who, with whom we've spoken at trade shows, people that have signed up for a webinar, people that we've spoken to at conferences. However we find them, these are people that we think we might want to do business with sometime. Then through the magic of things happening and conversations, our lead says, hey, let's do some business. And they express an interest in purchasing a product or a service from us. When we do that, our Zoho CRM converts that lead and that organization into a contact and an account. So a lead is somebody that we might want to do business with. A contact is somebody who has entered the deal zone where we are actively trying to sell something to that person or we have sold something to that person. When we convert a lead and an organization into a, into, um, a contact and account, the lead becomes the contact and the organization gets turned in a, into an account. So now that we have some context, let's go find that contacts module. <clears throat> in, in most Zoho installations, uh, we will find the contacts in the Zoho control bar up near the top left of your screen. In my situation here, you'll see it's immediately to the right of the leads module. So home, leads, contacts, accounts. That's a fairly common uh, arrangement of modules in Zoho. If by chance it's not there and it's not elsewhere on that top, um, that top row of the most commonly used modules, you may have to go to the ellipsis, the ellipsis that says there's more here and search for it there. By the way, if you're a bit unsteady in the Zoho interface, we have two great introductory lessons on how to get around in Zoho and Zoho interface basics. Look for those in the video library at marksgrouplive.com. So <clears throat> in this situation where I'm searching modules, I might search for contacts and it won't actually find it because the contacts module is already up here in the Zoho control bar. So. Let me get out of there. Let's see. Let's go to the contacts module. Right. Now that we're in the contacts module, how do we create one? There are two ways that we can do this. The most obvious way is to click on the plus sign at the, in the Zoho control bar and contact is the second item down there, right after lead. If we're in, and in fact, um, you can start this from any screen, uh, any screen in Zoho. 
<clears throat> so even if I'm, for example, in the lead screen, I can create a new contact by clicking on the plus sign in the Zoho control bar and clicking on contact. If I'm in the contacts module, I can do that as well. Or I can click on the plus sign that it's imme that's immediately beside the import button. However, neither of these methods is necessarily the most common. Remember that usually we start with a lead and we convert that lead into a contact when we start to pitch a deal and actively engage that person in the sales process. So usually we will create a new contact by converting a lead. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm in my leads module now and I'm going to convert one of my leads into a contact. Let's go for Max Minson. I've clicked on Max Minson's lead information, and uh, I'm, um, let's say that Dr. Minson has expressed interest in uh, one of our products or one of our services. And one of the things that I'll note is that there's all this information that we've entered on Dr. Minson, the name, the lead status, the annual revenue for Dr. Minson's company, um, and there's a note charming gentleman, he used to buy his mother flowers. <clears throat> I make note of that because we're going to see what information comes along when we convert Dr. Minson from a lead into a contact. And I'm going to do that by clicking on the convert button. So when I'm in a lead, I can click on the convert button. Zoho offers me a number of options here. It tells me it will create a new account for Dr. Minson's company, which in this case is MFEF Incorporated. It will create a new contact, that is Max Minson, and Zoho gives me the option to create a new deal. I won't, um, <clears throat> I won't get into the details of creating a new deal at this time. Uh, we do, of course, have a class on setting up and working deals which in some ways is, is the icing on the cake. That's the goal, that's the end game here. Now, when I do convert a lead, it is helpful for me to set an owner of that, con um, of that contact. This is important because in many organizations, your lead capture team is different from your business development team. That is to say, you'll have people who go out to conferences, who um, work on uh, organizational outreach activities, where they're gathering information on people who might want to do business with us. And when those people uh, enter the deal-making process, it might be handed off. Uh, that information might be handed off to a different team. So I click on the person there. And right now, our Zoho instance here only has two users in it. I will leave it as TMG Live Admin. And in fact, that was the owner that, uh, that was the default owner for the new record. In fact, when you're importing a large number of contacts, so for example, you've been working a trade show and you've got the lead generator or you've, you're collecting name cards or you're scanning badges, um, it is possible for you to import that list into Zoho and to set up automatic assignment rules that govern who owns any incoming contacts. On contacts. This is very powerful stuff and yes, we have a class on that too. So let's convert Dr. Max Minson. There's the process. Zoho tells me it has converted it successfully. And it says that here's the account. That's the organization that Dr. Max Minson belongs to. And it's created a new contact for Max. Now, when I go back to my leads module, I shouldn't see Dr. Max Minson there anymore. And I don't think he is. I'm sorting by lead name. It's doing the surname here, and it's definitely not there. Let's see if Dr. Max Minson is in my accounts. And there he is right there. So now that Dr. Minson is in my account, is in my contacts, what am I going to do with them? First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the name. This is, looks similar to the leads uh, module but this is in fact the contacts module. And sometimes it's helpful just to glance up 
and remember what context you're in by looking at the top bar and seeing where the shading is. Here, it's on contacts. <clears throat> now, first and foremost, when I'm in this screen, I can add information. Any of these blank fields that we can fill in is probably a good idea to fill in. I know that we don't always have time to research every aspect of every person in our leads uh, lists, but once they become contacts, it's increasingly important to have as much information as we plausibly can. This information can be helpful in understanding who our contacts contact is within the context of his or her organization and can give us helpful information when interacting with that contact. To modify any field, we can hover over it with a mouse and if we see a pencil icon, we can click in that field and add information. So in this case, I'm going to say uh, Director of Advanced Biological Research. Click on the plus sign. I've edited that information. I can also edit more than one field at a time by clicking on the edit button. And now I can click into any of those fields. Let's see. Um, let's take a look and make sure as we scroll down through this, MFEF, that's Dr. Minson's email address. All this information except for that was entered in the leads screen. Let's see, there's a description, there are my notes. Oh, there's my note. A charming gentleman, he used to buy his mother flowers. There is the note. So we entered this information in the leads screen and when Zoho created the contact <clears throat> out of the lead, Zoho pulled all of the information over into the contact. Now, when we talk about working a contact, apart from editing the information, we're most often talking about engaging with that contact in a meaningful manner. That means we can set up tasks. Let's scroll down here. There we go. Open activities. We can create tasks, such as sending information to our contact. We can set up events where we might meet with our contact or calls in which case uh, in which you know we call our contact. I'm sure you've heard that it takes seven interactions with a client before they're ready to make a purchase decision and these tasks often comprise many of those interactions. As we scroll down through the contact information, closed activities are simply open activities that we have completed. Uh, we can add information about deals that that contact is involved with. We can send information about products. We can send quotes. We can record sales orders, purchase orders. Uh, if we have integrated Zoho with our email accounts, we have a class for that, of course. Uh, we can also see a record of our correspondence with this contact. One of the neat areas that we look at, again, in another, in another lesson, is the campaigns module. We can tell Zoho about our marketing campaigns and then connect our contact with those campaigns so that we can evaluate the financial ROI for any given campaign. Very powerful stuff in terms of tracking the effectiveness of your marketing efforts. And finally, we have our social connector, which allows us to integrate Zoho with our Twitter and Facebook accounts and see instantly what this particular contact is doing on those platforms. Uh, because this is our uh, training Zoho training platform, uh, we are not actually connecting with real people, uh, so that's why this area is blank for Dr. Max Minson, who is also a fictional person. As with just about everything else that you've seen in this lesson, we do have a specific lesson on the social connector. Now, the one thing you are unlikely to do with a contact is delete it. However, if you found that you've really loused things up and you need to get rid of a contact who was never actually a person um, or somebody, uh, I'm not even sure if you do it for a dead end, but if for some reason you need to delete a contact, you can do so by clicking on the ellipsis in the top right corner and clicking on delete. Zoho asks if you're really sure that you want to do this, and that's a good thing because if you're really sure you want to do this, um, 
it's all right to do it. But on the other hand, if you have any organizational history with Dr. Max Minson, you probably do not want to get rid of any of your contacts. Um, when you delete the, the contact record, you're deleting all records that are related to that person. So you will not have any record of a history of deal, having dealt with Dr. Max Minson. If you have too many contacts and you don't want to keep seeing old contacts, there are ways to filter them out of your usual views. Check out our class on views for more information on that subject. All right, that brings us back to where we started, I think. So let's recap what we've gone over today. Today, we looked at placing contacts within the context of the Zoho environment, specifically within the context of leads and accounts, how a lead becomes a contact and an account that are usually involved in a deal. We've looked into how to find the contacts module, whether it's up in the Zoho control bar or whether it's under the ellipsis that says there's more here. We looked at two different methods for creating a new contact, and certainly the better one of these is just or the more common one of these is to start with a lead and to convert a lead we looked at some of the fields in a contact the fact that we can modify a field after the fact so once we've got a contact in there we can still go in and modify the fields uh, we looked at some of the most important fields notably the activities fields so the tasks the event and the calls and we looked at some of the things that how some of the ways that we can work a contact so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out our library for other training videos like this one. If you have any suggestions for other classes or if you have questions that you may have about Zoho, please email us at support at marksgrouplive.com. Thanks for viewing.